And welcome back to Oshawa Generals Hockey here on OntarioSportsRadio.com. In the second intermission, joined now by Gary Minnick of the Oshawa Generals. He's been around with the team for, you said, 45 years now? Off and on, yeah. Oh, wow, that's a long time. So lots of stories. How does this team stack up with the teams that you've seen over the years in terms of, because you're on the bus and everything, in terms of how close they are together as a group, because that's something I've noticed as well, and just how they play as a team. Well, you know, the uh, the Memorial Cup team in 1983, uh, they were veterans on that team, and it seemed uh, in those days the kids were older, so they were more mature than they are. You didn't have the 15, 16-year-olds like we have now, but uh, I see a lot of, of resemblance to some of those uh, teams in the 90s and 93 and 97 where there's this unity. Um, there's no selfishness, it seems, on this team, and... Uh, they all seem to gel. They all like each other, and I think that's been a big difference this year. I mean, if you would have told me in September we'd be tied for first place, uh, I wouldn't believe you. <laughs> but uh, you got to give them credit. They've uh, come together quite quickly, so um, I-, I like our chances this year. Well, I've seen a lot of hockey teams before, and the difference between the younger players and the older players on the team, it almost seems like they're divided and clicked, and you touched on that, is that team unity. How has it been cultivated that the youngsters come and fit in seamlessly with the older players on this team? Well, you're right, because uh, a lot of them are, some of them are in high school, others are taking university courses, and um, I don't know, I think DJ and the coaching staff is, is really, uh, and Jeff Tui, they seem to be able to uh, do various things uh, off the ice during the week that uh, everybody takes part, and I, and I think that... Uh, they go to the show or they go to uh, paintball and things like that. And I think there's more of a unity that way. And, and our leaders, uh, Brown and Lawton, Del Cole and so on, I, I think they really make themselves available to the younger kids. Now, you've known Jeff Tuey for a long time. On the other side of the rivalry, he's been in the business 32 years. Now, the last two or so, he's been here in, in Oshawa. So how big is that to see him come over to the other side? And how strange is that to see him here now walking the halls of the GM Center after being a Peterborough Pete for so long. Well, you're right, because it, it, various seasons over the years, uh, early in the year, I mean, Peterborough-Oshawa rivalry was just, there was nothing better. Everybody hated I mean, uh, Jeff would tell me he would come into this building when he was scouting and, and watching the other teams. He'd come in here. He was, he was kind of afraid because the fans, people of Oshawa, people of Peterborough, it was almost a hate. Thing. And it went to lacrosse, it went to baseball, softball, there was that rivalry. And uh, yeah, it seemed strange for him. But I mean, now the kids, they don't know that rivalry that they once had. So it's not as bad. And, uh, you know, Jeff has done a, a, a great job coming over. And, uh, you know, he's loyal to the Oshawa Generals now because they always say, once a general, always a general. <laughs> Forever a general, I'm sure. <laughs> And, you know, the proximity of the two cities isn't that close. They're like 45 minutes apart. So what sprung this rivalry? That's Where did this it. develop from? I don't know. I guess way back, even when my my dad was around, whether it was soccer or ball or what have you, there was just that, that rival because of the proximity of the two centers. And at that time, you know, Oshawa and Peterborough, the population was uh, similar. And there was a lot of... Uh, Peterborough people that worked in General Motors at the time, too, so it, it went into the plant as well. Uh, there was always that, uh, you know, rivalry and uh, the bragging rights that went along. And, I mean, both teams, Peterborough and Oshawa Generals, I think, have sent the most uh, hockey players to the National Hockey League. Yeah, and, you know, you've been around, uh, you know, we mentioned for a while now, and Scott Lawton, ever since he's come back, I've been running the numbers almost every game. They're 16-0 and when he gets a point. And they're 0-2-1 when, he, when he's held off the score, score sheet. So how does he stack up to the great, uh, this season especially, how does it stack up to the great years exhibited by generals like Bobby Orr and Eric Lindros and John Tavares? Where does his season rank amongst those players? Well, you know, he, he's come of age this year, and I think that five games, four games, whatever he played uh, at uh, – you know, it's shown now on the ice, but it's only been this year and last year that you could see the development. But uh, Bobby Orr, I know when he first came in as 125 pounds, 
14 year old it, it took a while but when he was 16 17 um, I know the hockey was different too but he changed the way defensemen played uh, Eric Lindros was always bigger than everybody else so there was that big uh, uh, how, how should I say it the big um, uh, I don't know uh, not the rivalry so much from other teams, but uh, because of his size, there was nobody that big could skate that well and, and handle the puck. So he, he had that publicity coming in where, you know, Lawton didn't. And so I, I would say, you know, if he played another year, maybe with John Tavares and all that, but I think all the publicity those kids got, I think that's what... Uh, is the difference where Scotty doesn't get that? Right, same he doesn't thing. get he no. doesn't get that elevation no. from the media and stuff like that. Yeah. But it, you know, speaking of another young player on the team, Dal Cole, he's only a 17 year old and he's you know close yeah. to the top yeah. in points, and it's his draft year. So how big has he been yeah. for the well, team? Well, you know, last year he played a ton of minutes and he played with good people, so I think that gave him a, a ton of confidence as well. And then uh, you know, playing with Lawton now, that's that's a big difference and. Uh, uh, they're moving like, like right along, and I think his uh, what's he rated now third, third or something. Yeah, he's, he's come he's up right a long way. Yeah. So whether he gets a chance to play for Team Canada along with Lawton, maybe their uh, status will really rise to the top. Yeah, and you know you mentioned that he played with good guys last year. He's on the line with Boone Jenner and Tyler Biggs. And I, one thing I was noticing with Ottawa when they were in on uh, on Friday that Travis Konechny, you know, he's their top pick. He's one of the better players. Uh, in the Ontario Hockey League as a youngster. He's playing third-line minutes. So do you think that the decision by DJ Smith and the coaching staff to put Dal Cole on that top line is smarter than putting a player on the third line, or do you like to see them eased in and then move up? To well, usually line? that's the way it went. The kids came in, they started on the fourth line and third line. But I guess necessity uh, you know, negated that he had to play those minutes. And trying him out there and being successful, I think you just go with it. So... It, it's luck, and uh, also you, it's what you do with what you know chance you get. So. Lots of lots of great players have come through here, but out of players that you've seen all over the league, uh, who's one that stood out to you as the most that you've seen in in the entire time that you've been affiliated with the OHL? Well, Bobby Orr definitely stands out to me. You could come to that game and see him, and he would do something different every game. You'd go away just shaking your head saying, how would he do that? But I think even today, going in, coming in here, he could play in this league because of how well he skated. Right. So I think he's my top pick. Um, but he's a general. I'm talking about guys on oh, other teams. Oh, okay, yeah. other teams. Well, you know what? Uh, let's see, the London Knights always had some some players that, uh, you know, even going back to Daryl Sittler that I remember that Sean and uh, Adam Graves is another one that comes to mind. Um, I guess over the years, I don't know, I always picked the generals <laughs> whenever we had the chance. You know, we had the Lindros and we, we had a Johnny Tavares and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, right now I can't think of one. I mean, Ottawa 67s had some great players. The Dennis Potvin stands out. He was a 16-year-old when I first saw him play. And he it, was outstanding. And, you know, you wouldn't give yeah. them credit uh, then, but maybe even the Stahl no. brothers or uh, right. Chris Pronger maybe yeah. even. Yeah, Chris Pronger, I remember him now that you mentioned it. Yeah, he stood out for Peter. And I have to mention Iserman. Iserman was something else for the Peter Verpeet, too. Yeah, absolutely. So, You're and, and the Stahl. That's, I'd have to go back uh, <laughs> in time and, and kind of think about that. But you're right. There, there has been some outstanding uh, hockey players that have come up through the OHA well, over the years. You were telling me before about Brendan Shanahan and, and in his draft year coming in um, to the OHL and how much you liked him. What was yeah. it about Brendan well, Shanahan that stood out to you? You know what? It was Sherry Basson that asked me if I wanted to go and see this one last tournament. Uh, he would want me to make a report on some of the players. Now, why Brendan Shanahan went to that tournament, I'm not quite sure. But uh, it was in Prescott, and uh, I went and I saw. I stayed for a couple of days. I saw him play three games, and each game he was outstanding. And uh, so at that time, I guess most of the scouts had seen all these players, and uh, we knew we weren't going to be able to pick Brandon Shanahan. But he was big. He wasn't the greatest skater in the world, 
but when he had a chance to score, he was able to put the puck in the net even as a midget. So uh, I guess uh, he's in the Hall of Fame now, so <laughs> certainly showed that, uh, uh, you know, he was quite the player. The other thing the other thing I've noticed uh, with this team is as close as they are, you know, with each other, the closeness with you is something that, you know, I, I didn't see coming, but, but they all seem to, like, you're almost like the team mascot almost to these well, kids. How do you feel yeah. about that? Well, I don't know. I Since I've retired from teaching about 17 years ago now, um, you know, I've got time. My wife's very understanding, and when she goes away shopping or whatever, I always come down to the rink. There's always something to do, and the kids are there, and I like I like to watch them practice. Um, a couple of times over the years, I've even gone on the ice and uh, done some... Uh, you know, dropping the pucks for face-offs and that, or coming out and shooting a couple of pucks past the net miners and then skating off the ice, telling them, you know, that's all I've got. So <laughs> that's it. But uh, I like to joke with them. It helps me stay young. Uh, we have a lot of fun off and on the ice. And uh, you're right, it's like a mascot. Uh, lately, since we've been on a four-game uh, winning streak, uh, I've been going in giving the starting lineup and... You know, I even did a Sherry Basson uh, imitation the other day. <laughs> keep them loose and come out. So uh, as long as we keep winning, I guess I have to go down, do the lineup, and then rush up here and do the scoring. So I enjoy it. So, uh, you know, you talk about, you know, trying to stay young and everything. I, where do you find the energy to do everything? That, I mean, last night we come in at, you know, one thirty. you know, for most senior citizens, that's like they've been sleeping like eight hours already. And you're on the bus, you know, you're watching the movies, you're enjoying yeah. everything. How do you do it? Well, What's I don't know. I've, I've always, well, I've, I go to the Y and go swimming. I'm in the pool by quarter to eight, try to swim a kilometer. Um, in the summertime, you know, I haven't done it for a number of years, but I, I even played some innings as a 57-year-old in the senior uh, Canadian championship. So I coach baseball, and I've been with the younger kids all the time. I coach phys ed. I don't know. It just keeps me young. I feel active. I've got six grandkids, and that keeps me busy as well. So, I don't know. I guess because I'm only about five foot six and a bundle of joy, uh, I've got a lot of energy. Well, we came in at one last night. Just let me know what time did you wake up this morning? What time did I wake up this morning? Quarter to eight. Quarter. Yeah. And you slept at God knows what time? Well, I dozed off at, in the bus on the way home from Mowing <laughs> Sound, but not much. I don't really need more than six hours sleep. Uh, sometimes. Uh, you know, if we've been on the road trip and it's it's hard to uh, go right to sleep, so I'll go in the hot tub, have a cigar, and you know, look at the stars. Sure. <laughs> you, you know what? I uh, I have no excuse anymore. Now I got home last night and I didn't wake up till twelve. So yeah. from now on, I'm just gonna be like, be like G. Attaboy. And then from now Attaboy. on, no more complaining Attaboy. at all. Well, <laughs> Gary, I'd like to right. thank you so much for doing thank this you. with us. Thank you. A pleasure. And, uh, absolute pleasure. Anytime. All right. Thanks yeah. a lot, G. Good. And uh, that we'll was talk to you later. Absolutely. That was Gary Minix of the Oshawa Generals, who's the coach's assistant now and been around for a long time. I'd like to thank G for doing that. Uh, he's quite a character and the lifeblood of this team, as far as I'm concerned. Move over, Deke. Gary Minix is coming for your job. He should have it. He's an absolute joy to be around and makes this season that's already so much fun with the record that the Generals have just that much more entertaining as he's made me feel really welcome here in my first uh, first year with the Generals. The entire staff has and the whole team, uh, but G just does it right.